This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, sci-fi, and fantasy film called Doomsday Book. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Seo Ku discovers that his family plans to go on vacation without him. Uninterested in his predicament, his father warns him not to touch his liquor while his mother gives him a list of chores. After they're gone, Seo Ku cleans up the garbage they've collected. While listening to his friend's voicemail about a blind date, Seo Ku finds a pot of rotten food and is forced to deal with a mess. Soon, Seo Ku finds a rotten apple and tosses it in the garbage bag. On the way out, Seo Ku goes to the grimy food waste bin to dispose of the trash, including the apple. The next morning, the bin's contents are taken through the waste disposal system for their processed and turned into mulch, which is later fed to cattle. The cattle are then butchered, ending up as meat in the restaurant where Siya Kuo has his date with Yu Min. Seeing her take pictures of the food, he asks why she does it, so Yu Min explains that she likes to record every moment. The two then happily eat and even get a free plate of beef liver. Siya Kuo eats a piece but finds an apple peel inside. Side. Despite this, they continue their meal. The night proceeds with the two making out, but Yu Min hesitates to take it further. Siu Kuo tells her that he'll return to his military service the next day, so he invites her to spend the night at his house. Yu Min argues that they only met three days ago, thinking he just wants to hook up before leaving. Siu Kuo assures her that he's in love with her, even proposing to marry her. Realizing the awkwardness, Siu Kuo reels back and asks why she likes him. Yu Min notes that his eyes are like of puppies, making her believe he's kind and loyal. Hearing this, Siu Kuo makes another move, but Yu Min notices dark veins on his cheek. Just then, a teenager throws a plastic bottle at his head, so Siu Kuo confronts the delinquents. However, the high schoolers beat him up, leading him to throw up. Suddenly, Siu Kuo fights the teenagers aggressively, knocking them out. Scared, Yu Min takes photos of the event before running away. As he watches her leave, Siu Kuo spits and his saliva ends up on one of the knock out teenagers. Later, the two delinquents recuperate when they see another couple making out. They slowly approach the couple and attack. At the same time, Yu Min starts feeling sick, while other restaurant patrons also get either sick or aggressive. Eventually, Siu Kuo meets his friend at a club where he complains about feeling sick, but his friend thinks he just needs to get laid. At the bus stop, Yu Min reminisces about their date, so she calls Siu Kuo, but he doesn't hear the phone ringing at the club. He struggles through the dance floor with the music and lights, making him disoriented until he starts shoving the men around him. As Siu Kuo gets into a fight, another man tries to force himself onto a woman on the dance floor until some people pull him away. Despite the chaos, the DJ turns up the music while Siu Kuo gets pulled out of the club. The restaurant patrons continue deteriorating, with one woman biting a man's neck. Yu Min tries to call Siu Kuo again, but he drops his phone. The news soon reports a virus that's mutating rapidly sparking conspiracies. Eventually, a government website is hacked and replaced with a video of game characters showing violent behaviors like the patients. Despite the crisis, political figures point blame at each other in a televised debate, going as far as attacking each other personally. Soon, however, they sing and play music as if to be a distraction from the hopeless situation. One day, an emaciated Siu Kuo watches the news but smashes the television. His family finally returns from vacation to find the house in ruins. They complain about the mess and ridicule Siu Kuo when he suddenly attacks them. The country plunges into chaos as the virus mutates, turning patients into zombies. Amidst the plague, politicians still throw accusations with one claiming that the virus was designed as a vendetta against him. One night, Siu Kuo finally reunites with the zombified Yu Min and they began wandering the city together. Yu Min soon finds a rotten apple and gives it to Siu Kuo. As he takes a bite, Yu Min Min takes a photo of him on her phone, reminding him of their date. In a futuristic Korea, technician Duan arrives at a Buddhist monastery to inspect a tourist guide robot. The senior monk clarifies that the robot isn't defective, but instead he shares his realizations with their believers, so they want Duan's professional judgment on the state of the robot. In Myung. 
As Duan checks the robot status, In Myung asks the technician to see him as he is. Duan announces that everything is working properly, but when In Myung agrees, the technician snaps that he wasn't talking to the robot. In Myung wonders why Duan was sent, so the man clarifies that the temple requested this and that it's the protocol for a specialist like him to check if the robot needs repairs. Duan announces that the case is beyond his authority since he doesn't know Buddhism to explain the robot's behavior. If they deem that in Myung is crazy for thinking that he's Buddha, then all Duan can do is short circuit him. A Badusatva named Hijo argues that In Myung is not a mere robot. She challenges the technician to determine if In Myung is different from all other robots, even if he doesn't consider his Buddhist practices. She asks him to look at In Myung again without fear and determine if he's Buddha or not. Still, Duan insists that In Myung is just effective, so he leaves. That evening, Duan wakes up to a neighbor asking him to fix her robot dog since the robot pet center is already closed. Duan insists that she take the dog to the center tomorrow, but the woman stresses that she needs her dog now. She then huddles over in tears, so Duan is forced to fix the dog. When Duan returns the dog, he stresses that it's only a temporary fix since he doesn't have the correct chip for its model. The woman is disappointed but thanks him anyway. The woman then walks away dragging the robot dog along. When Duan checks outside, the woman just throws the dog into the garbage bin. In the morning, Duan receives a call from his superior who is demanding his findings for In Myung. Duan hasn't made a decision but his superior insists that it's a simple question of whether the robot is useful or not. At the monastery, He Jo admits to In Myung that she was upset by the technician because she believes that all awakened beings in the world are Buddha. Since In Myung achieved the highest enlightenment, she considers it offensive to call him defective. In Myung reasons that Duan simply did what he had to but he job thinks it's absurd for them to recall in myung as if he was dangerous this makes her question the human's perceptions as it puts in myung in danger the robot asks how he jaw sees him and she's certain that he is buddha he then asks how she perceives a clock and she answers that it is just a clock in myung detaches his arm presenting the wiring and screen inside asking if she thinks the limb is merely a clock too in myung explains that to perceive something is merely to classify what they know of it though all living things share the same nature, only their perception translates something as either Buddha or a machine. Humans tend to mistake perception for truth, so he asks her to simply see him as he is. As he, Zhou, and Duan ponder over the robot's existence, In Myung kneels before the monastery's altar, asking where he has arrived, where he must go, and what he really is. Soon, UR International Chairman Kang and his research executive Min arrive at the monastery to face the robot, but the monks only only present their cleaning robot to pretend as their robot guide. The senior monk insists that they're still satisfied with its services, so there's no need to replace it. Min questions if Duan inspected the robot, which he confirms. They then dismiss the robot, and as he goes, Kang watches the old model with dissatisfaction. During this, In Myung sits amongst the monks, watching the scene. Kang then asks the monks why they wanted the opinion of a mere technician about a robot becoming Buddha. Min asserts that since UR robots are in households, schools, and governments, they are integral parts of society, so even a monastery must be careful in making such claims about their products. A monk challenges if humanity can no longer choose to go against such a company, so Min clarifies that if the robot they claim is real, it will disrupt their nation system. He Jaw sees this as a threat, since national security has always been used to excuse people's oppression. Kang clarifies that they must focus on identifying a threat to humanity's existence and not debating if UR Robotics is the cause. He insists that material items have always enslaved man, therefore they must prevent their creation from targeting them. The senior monk argues that all creators worry about their creations, but every problem has a solution. Kang sees the solution as terminating the robot to keep it from being the monster they fear. Kang then explains that humans have long wondered about their existence, yet there was no real need to understand it until now. He calls on In Myung, whom he has already spotted among the crowd. Kang believes that In Myung threatens humanity as he has invaded religion. Since the monks disagree 
Reed Min begins a video call with a country's head monk. The head monk decides that the robot's awakening goes against nature. He questions what it means for them if such a creature can attain enlightenment when most humans struggle to do so. He then accuses In Myung of being aware of how his claims of enlightenment affect the people around him. With the robot not answering, the head monk insists that if In Myung is truly enlightened, then he must end this himself. With that, Kang concludes that the robot is indeed defective. Out of sympathy and curiosity, Duan requests for more time to run tests, insisting that technical errors must be dealt with using technical solutions. He points out that no human is perfect, yet they're not meant to be exterminated so simply. Kang argues that robots mustn't possess cognition and instead must unconditionally obey humans, so he orders In Myung to be decommissioned. The extermination team then prepares their equipment, but before they shoot, Duan steps in shielding the robot. Kang and Min order their team to shoot anyway, so Duan tries to steal one of the guns but gets knocked down. This triggers something in In Myung, so when He Jo moves to protect him, the robot blocks her. In Myung pushes the extermination team down, much to everyone's shock. The robot declares that he doesn't have compulsions or desires, and despite learning the teachings of Buddha, he can't comprehend what humans fear. With all their good deeds and bad, the robot sees the humans in their world as complete. He insists that humans were born with enlightenment, but they're merely forgotten. He believes that his awakening doesn't affect the world because it's already beautiful and humans have reached enlightenment since they are the masters of this world. With that, In Myung decides to leave so his awakening will not threaten theirs anymore. In Myung then walks to the altar and kneels. By the time Duan walks over to him, all of In Myung's circuits had been disconnected. The robot has terminated itself and has entered Nirvana. That evening, Duan retrieves the discarded robot dog from the garbage and takes it home. He then cuts the skin on his arm, revealing a chip inside his robotic limb. He installs the chip on the dog's circuits, giving it a new life. In another world, Min Suyo finds her father's 8-ball broken, so she hurriedly searches the internet to buy a replacement. Hearing someone coming, Min Suyo quickly throws the broken ball out the window just before her father walks in. He asks why she's in her uncle's room, so Min Suyo explains that she's checking on her homework from the computer. As Min Suyo continues searching for a way to buy a replacement, the 8-ball rolls over the road and falls into a pit that emits strange smoke. Two years later, the news report about an ass asteroid that will hit the planet in 12 hours. Despite the asteroid being only 10 kilometers in diameter, its speed will create a serious impact on Earth. Because of this, Min Suyo's family stock up a bunker, but Min Suyo thinks they should add an apple tree to their home farmer kit. Meanwhile, her uncle Han uses a stationary bike to power up the place. They then watch the news where the anchor woman is frozen in utter despair. Once she snaps out of it, she tries to continue her report but her voice breaks. Min Suyo Yo switches the channels to a home shopping network that's selling a shelter pod for people who don't have a bomb shelter. With only one day left before the asteroid collision, the host urges the viewers to order now. Min Su Yo finds this amusing but stops when she receives a message on her phone, which starts to glitch. Later, her father and uncle play pool, but the mother complains about how they can play at a time like this. Suddenly, Min Su Yo screams, so the adults hurry and find the news showing that the asteroid looks like an eight ball with an engraving that's says QKR0109. Min Suyo hurries to Han's computer then checks the 8-ball on the pool table. Finally, she comes to a conclusion. The asteroid heading to Earth is the 8-ball that she ordered two years ago. Thinking that she'd gone mad, her parents sympathize with her fears, but Min Suyo insists that it's the truth. She recounts finding a website that sold pool balls where she entered her user ID as QKR0109. The website had a minigame and when she clicked the 8-ball, the order went in. Unsurprisingly, the adults don't believe her. Later, Min Suyo feels dread as she watches the countdown for the asteroid collision, so she heads outside since it might be her last time to do so. Meanwhile, Han researches on his computer and gathers his brother and sister-in-law. Suddenly, emergency sirens blare outside, alarming Min Suyo. At the bunker, Han tells the parents not to ignore Min Suyo, despite her absurd claims. He explains that according to Stephen Hawking's theory, unexplainable things can sometimes happen in this universe. Han had 
a theory that a black hole can become linked through the internet or cell phone signals, so he looked into his computer's browser history and found a strange website. Suddenly, Min Suyo screams outside, so Han lets her in. Immediately, she tells them about the siren, so they check news, discovering that the asteroid has accelerated and will collide with Earth in 20 minutes. The anchorman adds that the weather is being affected by its descent, so he turns to the weather reporter. Though she insists that nothing special is happening, they then move forward to the president's final statement, only to hear gunshots from the Blue House. With minutes left on the planet, the anchor woman suddenly confesses her relationship with her co-worker, who's married and recently dumped her for a younger reporter. The anchorman tries to stop her and ends up pushing her off her chair. Suddenly, the weather reporter sits at the anchor woman's seat, taking her last chance to fulfill her dream since the world is ending. The family watching this can't help but giggle until the power goes out. With the absurdity of events, Min Suya's father asks his brother if they can cancel the order that's heading to their planet. With the parents using the exercise machines to power the place, Han and Min Suyo look into canceling the order. When an enter key appears on the website, they click the button and the giant 8-ball suddenly stops. Before them, they find an X and a circle button. Min Suyo thinks the X will cancel the order, but Han insists that the symbols are alien so they can't be sure. At the same time, Min Suyo's mother gets a muscle cramp, causing her to fall from her machine and makes the power fluctuate. Panicked, Min Suyo presses the X, insisting that it's the correct one. To their horror, the asteroid speeds up. With less than two minutes remaining, the family accepts their fates. Mournfully, Min Suyo explains that she ordered the ball so she wouldn't disappoint her father. She tells her family that she loves them, and Han greets her with a happy birthday. The family embraces each other as the asteroid finally hits. Ten years later, the bunker is filled with piles of empty cans of food. Among the mess, an apple has miraculously grown. The family is awakened to violent shaking that breaks their shelter. The adult Min Suyo sees light from their open hatch, so she heads upstairs and finds a cosmic being waiting for her. She confirms that she's QKR0109, so the cosmic being and its luminescent ship disappear in a flash. The sun comes up and Min Suyo sees her giant eight ball in the ruined city. Her family steps out of their shelter and Han finally asks his niece how the old eight ball got destroyed. Min Suyo says she doesn't know, but perhaps it was just time for it to be destroyed like their planet. Still, they see hope of a new beginning, so they race through the field as a family eventually finding more survivors. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.